Good afternoon, Stitchers. It's Judy Whitman with JBW Designs, and I'm so happy to have you back with me today. It, it, I, I had quite a busy morning trying to get this all set up. I don't know why it took me so long, but the best laid plans turned from morning till afternoon, which is just fine. So first of all, I always want to thank you for taking the time to watch the videos, for making comments and writing emails and asking questions. You are just all the best. And we know that our stitching community is so supportive of one another. And aren't we lucky to be part of this? I, I thank my lucky stars every day for all of you. So let's get started. I have um, quite a long list of topics that I wanted to address today, but all of them are centered around samplers. But I want to think about samplers, not only antique samplers, but other kinds of samplers and how we might use those um, in our homes for other ideas. So I hope I remember everything that I want to tell you today. If I look down at my notes, you'll know why I don't have an assistant to kind of um, poke me and say, oh, Judy, you forgot this. So <clears throat> here we go. Let's get started and thank you. So the first thing I want to tell you about is that I have uh, several trunk shows that are out this month. And a trunk show is actually, um, actually just a box full of models that I send to shops and other events. And um, so this month I have two different events. And the first one I want to tell you about is called Galleria. And I'm hoping that a lot of you have heard about this already, but if not, I'll give you a brief description. So this is actually a retail show that is put on by Kathy of Inspired Needle. She has a shop in Florida. The retail show is held in St. Charles, uh, Missouri. If you haven't been there, it is just a charming town. and. It is held in an Embassy Suites hotel, much like our wholesale shows. There are vendors um, and a lot of great, great ones who are going to be exhibiting this year. Sorry to say I am not going to be at Galleria this year, and I've had to miss it now two years in a row, mainly due to um, trips that my husband and I have had planned. So I'm going to miss again this year, but um, I sent uh, Kathy, a box full of all of my most recent models from this past year and lots of stock. So if you are at Galleria, you'll be able to um, see the models and purchase things that you like. Um, I should tell you that it, uh, let's see, it's next week. So it starts, I believe, oh, let's see, let me get this straight here. I believe it opens on Thursday and I forgot to look up the hours. You, you can go to their website and it runs Friday and Saturday. And they offer classes, they offer round robins, which are um, really fun events where four or five teachers each have 15 minutes to present a project and you get a little kit. Um, so if you get a chance to go, I'm going to encourage you to do so. Because as you know, seeing the models in person makes all the difference in the world. Um, about how you feel about what you've seen. So look it up, um, check out who the vendors are, check out the times, and perhaps you and a friend will take a, a day trip or figure out how to get there. So I hope so, I hope you'll give it a try. And then the other thing that I want to tell you about is I also just sent off another box of models to a shop in Texas, and it's called The Stitch Knit, Niche. And it's hard to say quickly. And it is in Arlington, Texas. And I'm going to feature uh, that shop as my shop of the week this, this time. And uh, the models should be arriving early next week and she will have them for two or three weeks. So if you're in that area, I'm gonna show you all the information about her shop a little later. But um, just if you're in that area, stop in and visit. So I, as you know, I always have so many topics and I try to keep notes from one video to the next so that if I forget something in the last one, I think, well, let's get around to that in this one. So some of you have probably seen this little design on Instagram. And 
I want to tell you it's a free design that I did um, a couple months ago and Kia B with um, who does floss tubes also asked me if I would design something that they could give to their viewers and this is sponsored by a uh, group on Instagram called the Counted Threaded Stitcher and you can enter that into your search engine on Instagram and go to their website and they have or their page actually and they have a link so that you can download this little chart. Now some people have had trouble getting it um, so I'm going to give you another two options um, in order to get this chart. So the second option is for you to go to Elizabeth Can Stitch, and, and many of you probably watch her already. She has a wonderful floss tube, and she actually uh, stitched this design, and in her video number 114, she shows not only how she finishes it, but in her description box below, she gives a link of how to get to the site to download this free chart. So if you're looking for and you wanted something uh, quick and simple for your uh, ornament stitching, I'm going to encourage you to try that. The third option, which is I'm going to encourage you to try the first two first because I get so many emails every day. If you are having absolutely zero luck um, at either of those possibilities, uh, send me an email and I can send you the chart. So we want to get it to you somehow. Let's see, I know what else is on my, I'm surrounded by things as usual. It's funny because some of them are quite large, so I have them kind of balanced everywhere. We'll see, see how I do. So uh, last time in my video, <clears throat> I talked to you about my Friends of JBW Designs Facebook page, and I just love the fact that so many stitchers are not only signing up for that page, but they're posting their finishes, and there have been a really couple of really cute ones this past week. Um, yesterday somebody posted the uh, Twas the Night series and she had stitched them all um, as one. It's actually four separate books. So I made a notation on that to let you know if you wanted the border for that, how to get it. But I'm going to show you two other designs that appeared this week that really struck my fancy. So this was posted by Sally and this is actually quite a an older design, but it is a French country. No, I'm sorry. It's alphabet pumpkin. I get all my <laughs> titles mixed up and I just loved her finish. So she finished it as if it was a log cabin quilt and her choice of fabrics was just luscious, just beautiful. So I thought I'd show that finish to you. And then uh, Kathy, who's one of my frequent uh, contributors just finished the um, Christmas in the round and she said that she got this piece at Hobby Lobby. What I'm not sure of is if this is the same one I showed you in the last video. I think it is because I, I asked her if that's where she had gotten it and of course she painted it white and um, I just thought it turned out beautifully. So those were my two uh, friends page finishes. So what is next? Ah, I know. So I have a website and I've talked to you about this before. It is jbwdesigns.com. And on that website, if you look like the top bar, it has uh, titles, you know, all kinds of categories. I think alphabets is one of the categories. I have some alphabets on there that you can print off if you need them, small little ones that I often use in my French country designs. But then I also have um, a category called shop. And the shop has been kind of neglected only because I'm so busy with everything else. But this week, um, my helper was here, Sue was here earlier this week, and we kind of did an inventory of everything that I have in stock and compared it to the stock that is listed on my website. And many of them were way off. I mean, some showed zero stock when actually I have 50 copies. So uh, Sue got me started and she inventoried about half of the titles and then I finished it up. And then thankfully my um, 
my IT person, Don, corrected all of my inventory for that site to show whether there is actually inventory in stock. And we also, I had her remove anything that is no longer in print or no longer available. So if you're looking for uh, some of my older designs, they are on the website. So let's get into my main topic for today. And it is sampler September, just one second here. I don't want to choke while I'm telling you all of this. And I have really been looking forward to talking to you about my samplers. Um, <clears throat> I, I actually am all over the board. As you know from seeing different views in my office, I have many antique samplers almost on every wall that I've been collecting for quite a few years. But I also, because I love samplers so much, not everyone likes the antique samplers. So a lot of my designs are actually like an adaptation of an antique sampler. And so I'll use an alphabet um, from an alphabets from antique samplers. I use motifs from antique samplers. And I like to combine those for a different look. So today I'm going to show you a couple things. I'm going to show you um, my antique sampler collections that I've put together, and I chose one sampler out of each of those collections. And then I'm going to go into another topic, which is samplers that are adaptations, and then um, a new more, I, I don't like to say modern, because I don't think of uh, these designs as modern, more as classic, um, classic designs with a sampler feel. So, Hopefully this all makes sense when I finish today. So the first thing I want to start with here, and I've got, as I said, many, many piles of things to show you, is I'm going to start with my sampler collection booklets. And I've done three of them. And the first, oh, it's probably going to have some glare on here. I didn't take it out of the bag. I'm sorry about that. So the first one was uh, a collection of antique red samplers. And they are so much fun to chart. To, um, I didn't necessarily stitch all of them, but I pulled out one of the samplers that's in this. Uh, and each book has uh, five samplers in it. So I pulled out one of my favorites mainly because it was stitched on probably the finest count linen that I have in my collection. And of course, you don't have to do it on anything like that. You can do it on Ada, but it's such a dear little sampler. I loved uh, the little border down here, the star. Uh, it was not signed, it was not dated, but um, the alphabets are just so graceful and pretty, especially that alphabet, that cursive alphabet right at the top. Um, she, she has little arrows in there. She's got a series of numbers. It was just such a dear little sampler. So that was one of my favorites out of, no, let's see, this is gonna be the problem. Where do I put everything? excuse me while I hide it over there. So that was one of the samplers that I wanted to share with you. And then the set, I did another collection of antique samplers, of course called Antique Sampler Collection 2. And the piece that I want to show you out of this one, which I've shown you probably a long time ago, although we may have a lot of new viewers who are not familiar with this. So I'm gonna take this, if you'll wait one second here. Sorry about the crinkle. I never knew exactly, I know that it, it really bothers me when I hear it in a video, but I didn't realize that if you have earbuds in, it's especially loud. So this is what I want to show you, is that these booklets, the charts in them, for some of them, like the sampler that I'm going to show you that's my favorite, are quite large. And this is just a series of separate 
charts and then the history, if I could find it, of the girl who stitched it. So this, this whole collection of five antique samplers is just like that first booklet that I showed you. Um, you know, they're all charted with the history and the kinds of things that you would want to know. So I am going to, I'm going to back up a little bit because, as I said, this one is so enormous. All right, I'm trying to figure out how to turn it around without clunking myself in the head. Oh, this is going to be so awkward. I hope you're getting a good laugh out of this. Okay, I haven't clunked myself yet. So this is an Italian sampler. And it, it was actually done as a towel. And we're going to um, talk a, a little bit later. <laughs> I'm sorry, my head is so crooked. Let's try it this way. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about samplers because I had a really good question from one of our viewers about framing samplers. And I'm going to address that uh, topic at the end. But I just loved this piece. And you can see, you probably can't see, but there are little tabs at the end of this sampler. Now this was done, okay, I should have looked at it more carefully before I started this. Uh, let's see, in 1894, it, the alphabets in, the reason I like this so much is the alphabets in here are beautiful. You can see this one here, the very graceful one here, the Greek key border. And we believe that it was done in um, Padoa, which is outside of Venice, Italy. And uh, as a girl in her fifth year of school. So Evan, I just love this sampler. So thankfully, I didn't knock myself out sh showing it to you. That would have been quite a funny video. So the third collection that I want to show you today was the one that I um, released uh, this last March. And this is a collection of American marking samplers. So this is a little bit different size booklet. These were all taken, again, from antiques that I own. They're not all red. Uh, some of them had other colors in them. They are, they range in date, I think from 1787 to 1882. And I have two of the antiques that I want to show you that I based this booklet on because they were so, such interesting pieces. So let's set that over here. So I have not framed these yet. I actually did stitch them again, but I probably will frame the antiques. So this was done, let me turn this around so you can see it, by Lucinda Hayward, and she was only nine years old. I just think that's remarkable. I don't think that it had a year on it. I do believe that it was quite, it is quite old because the linen looks as if it's hand worn, hand woven, not worn. And it has some wonderful borders in here. She actually did a beautiful job of stitching. So that is one that was in that American marking sampler. And as you know, marking samplers were done by little girls who were learning their alphabets. Uh, they may have had to mark their linens in their household, but I just think they're just fascinating. Now this one is called, let's see, the Jane Forbes sampler. And I have to study it again because this one is the 1787. So it's quite remarkable. I believe that Jane was older when she did it. Uh, let's see, does it say her years? I thought that it did, but now I'm not remembering. I'm sorry, I didn't look this up ahead of time. But this is a second um, antique marking sampler that's in that um, third booklet that I showed you. So those uh, that I'm showing you right now are based on antique samplers. But as I mentioned, not all of you are interested in stitching those. So I also want to show you, uh, let me get to my notes here, that sometimes um, designers don't always reproduce the sampler in total. 
sometimes we just take a portion of that sampler because it is more interesting than the whole thing. So I'm going to show you an example of that. And um, this was, I've shown, this was a piece that was very, very popular this year. You've probably seen it on Instagram dozens of times. But if you look at the original sampler that I purchased, uh, which incidentally was framed and it was glued to the backing, I'll show you what it looked like. So this was the sampler that I purchased to reproduce Eliza's French birds, which are in the center there. So I just felt like that, I loved that motif that was in this sampler. And so I'll show you the booklet, which you've probably seen many, many times before, because uh, people, a lot of people have been stitching it. There have been a couple stitch alongs. So I used only a portion of that antique sampler to reproduce this design. But then I did take it a step further because there are motifs, let me hold that up again, in this sampler that I thought could be used and were quite charming. So the corner design right here, the little wreath right here, and then, let me hold this up, and then this long piece right here, I adapted into Let's see if I can move this out of the way here. I adapted that into Eliza's Sewing Smalls. So there are three designs in this booklet, and this is a little scissors case that came from the corner design. Let's see, the scissor fob. And then I'm trying to cover this up as I show you. And then there is a little um, long needle, um, like a pin cushion, a tiny pin cushion. So that is another way to look at samplers, is to just say, I'm going to only do a piece of this. I find that most interesting, but not reproduce <clears throat> the whole design. So I have um, several samplers in my antique collection that are not all alphabets. I take that back. One of these is going to be an alphabet completely with a beautiful border. The other is probably one of my favorite antiques. And I bought it online. Um, I think I bought it on eBay from a dealer over overseas. And I'm going to show you what the original, and I have the original uh, framed in the office here. This is what the original looked like. And what I just loved, I'm going to show you the piece that I, I stitched. What I loved about this sampler were several things that I thought were so unique. First of all, the blue and white striped vase in the center. And if I think about this, I kind of match that vase today, don't I? And I love the urns that are down here. There's a little dog that's looking kind of bedraggled down here. There's some beautiful wreaths some beautiful borders. It's just a lovely combination of pieces. Now I did, I reproduced this whole design and published it as the antique vase sampler booklet. I also had taken several designs out of this and did smalls with some of those, which you could do too. You could make a needle book or a needle roll or something like that and just do a portion of the sampler rather than the whole thing. That booklet that I had with the smalls, I'm sorry to say, is out of print, but this antique vase sampler one is still available. So this is what the uh, reproduction looks like of that piece. And I did reproduce it exactly as it was charted. So that's another favorite. And then I have another one to show you, and where did I, here it is. All right, so sometimes I buy a sampler, and once again, I don't, I do an adaptation of that sampler. So I'm going to show you a third kind of sampler that's been adapted. So let's look here in this booklet. This is called the French Alphabet Sampler. And this is what this design looked like when I purchased it. 
And incidentally, many of these were not framed. We're going to address that a little, little later. But often, uh, many of these are just, they're stitched, they're folded, they've never been framed. Um, but we will talk about that later. So this is what the original sampler looked like. And I decided when I reproduced it, first of all, the border, you'll see when I hold it up, is just fabulous. It's just a wonderful leaf and berry border. I loved <clears throat> the alphabet. I wasn't sure how I was going. This incidentally um, is a French, obviously, alphabet. The shape of the letters are just beautiful. And I'm going to talk to you a little later about possibly using some of these beautiful alphabets in other ways in things that you produce. So let me grab this one. Let's get this out of the way. So this is, uh, and this often if I um, film from the other direction in my office here, this often is in the background hanging um, on the wall next to my bookcase. So this is the adaptation that I did of that sampler. I actually ended up charting all of the letters, although not all of the letters were in the original. And I want you to look very closely at that beautiful border. And once again, you might not you might not want to do the whole thing, but you might want to take your initials out of here. You might want to do something with the border. You could make a darling little uh, pin cushion. There are just so many other ways to go about looking at antique samplers and figuring out what, I don't want to stitch the whole thing, but what can I do that would um, be doable for me? Because I realize, oh, <laughs> clunk, clunk, uh, that not everyone wants to do a whole sampler. So this is what that booklet looks like. And that, that one is still available too. All right, moving right along. Now I want to kind of get into the topic of samplers that I have done that are not reproductions of antiques, but they have a sampler flavor. I'll put it that way. So I'm going, I brought up two models to show you and two of them I just brought the books over. But one of the pieces that I did, oh, let's see, a couple years ago, um, I did an Anne of Green Gables design. Let's see if I can get that without a glare, which is very hard. And I just wanted to reproduce Anne of Green Gables home and uh, chart that and add borders and other elements, the schoolhouse and the woods and um, an alphabet. Now, I doubt after reading Anne of Green Gables that little Anne ever <laughs> took time to stitch a sampler, but I wanted this to have the feel of her sampler, of what she might uh, produce. So I was inspired years ago when we went to Prince Edward Island, and um, it was just charming to visit the home um, that is there and the museum that is uh, dedicated to the author. So that's one design that is a more um, classic in interpretation of a sampler. Another one that I've done is called, let me show you this one, the Rabbit Alphabet. And again, I've taken all, I'm gonna show you the whole thing in a minute. I've taken all of the rabbit charts here and the alphabet and the borders out of antique samplers, but I have kind of rearrange them into a design that looks like this. And I have seen this stitched in many, many colors and it is charming. I've actually seen it stitched over one and it was just adorable. I used a lot of buttons, uh, antique buttons in this piece when, when I was stitching it. I don't know if you can see that with the glare on here. But so that's another uh, more classic interpretation of a sampler. And now I have two others to show you. And they are, I can't remember, I think it's been a while since I've shown this. This is my French country stocking. 
and we're really not into Christmas designs yet, but when I was thinking about this topic today, I thought, you know, this falls into that very same category because all of the lettering was taken from antique samplers, all of the motifs, the reindeer, um, the trees, etc., were taken from antique samplers. And I've always loved the way this turned out. So this is what that booklet looks like. Let me show you here. And there's a full-size chart in here because it's quite a large chart. There actually is a follow-up to this um, stocking. There's one, I think it's called, <laughs> I should be able to remember this, I think it's called French Country Reindeer Stocking. I'll have to pull that out when we do our Christmas designs. So that's another uh, classic interpretation of a sampler. And then my last one today that I wanted to show you is the floral alphabet. And this was done quite a few years ago, but it's always been one of my favorites. Uh, it, again, it's just all the alphabets and the little motifs taken from antique samplers. And I pulled out that model and again, you could stitch this in your favorite color. And this is what this looks like. And again, it's it's kind of like putting my round designs together where they're made up of um, motifs. It's like putting a puzzle together, trying to figure out how all the letters are going to fit in next to one another and they're all different fonts. So let me hold that up a little longer here and I'll show you again what the booklet looks like. So that is kind of the start or the midpoint here of um, my sampler discussion. Now one of the things that occurred uh, in my last video is that I got a wonderful um, set of questions from Lisa. And you know I always tell you send me questions, I love hearing from you. And I thought this, her questions actually went uh, perfectly along with my topic today. And so she wanted to know, were the original samplers uh, in frames or just kept flat? Now, first of all, I have to say, I am not an expert on antique samplers. And I've told you that before. There are many people who know much more than I do. But I can tell you um, just what I have found in the collections that I have. I would say most of the ones that I get are in this form, as I showed you before. They're flat and they never have been framed. Once in a while, I uh, purchase a sampler that has been framed. I This is my theory and I would really like your input on this. I am guessing that in most cases, families were not able to afford to have their sampler, the girl samplers framed. Now I might be wrong on that. Um, we'll have to ask and maybe we'll get some input so that I can talk about that next time. If you're interested in, and I'm going to go into another little topic related to this about framing samplers. If you're interested in studying old, t old, uh, of course, antique samplers, I'm going to encourage you to go to a site and I will try to, I'm gonna write myself a note because I like to put um, my notes in my uh, description of my video below. There is a woman who owns a company called, and many of you may have heard of her, called M. Finkel, F-I-N-K-E-L, and daughter. And she uh, sells antique samplers her posts, she posts every week, almost sometimes every day, uh, she'll feature a sampler. I would encourage you to follow her. And if you're interested in seeing antique samplers and how they're framed, I would study the pieces on her website. Now, most of the time I have found, let me move this over, that when I do buy a piece that is framed, and this was from one of the collections that I talked about earlier, that the pieces are actually, a lot of times they have hem stitching on them, so they're usually mounted on an acid-free board or they're mounted on linen. In this, in this case, 
this sampler was mounted on linen. Um, I don't usually see mats on them. I don't think mats are probably appropriate to the age of the samplers. And Lisa also asked about choosing frames. And I think that, again, is a personal preference. Um, I do like wood frames. Uh, I'm going to give you another source for um, seeing how antique frames can be cut to fit your samplers. If you watch Kim from The Contented Stitcher, she almost everything that she does is gorgeous, but she is just the master of buying antique frames and cutting them down to fit to size and often staining them and <clears throat> getting them to look just perfect on the piece that she's finished. And if you check out her channel, I, I don't know what um, plus two number she's done this with, but I know that she, you could probably Google it, she has done episodes about how she cuts the frames down and how she stains them. So if you're, if that's something that you're interested in doing, I think it's a great idea. I actually have done, I have a antique dealer here in Kalamazoo that I know who buys a lot of old frames and I often take my pieces to him and we find a frame that we think looks nice with the piece and he cuts it to size. So um, that of course is a huge help and I think it looks more authentic when I do that. So let's see, have I told you everything that I wanted to about the frames? Um, I think I have. I think I've talked about all of that. So my next topic, and, and this won't um, be too long because I don't want to go too long with this video, is I am inspired by people who write um, decorating blogs, etc. about how they use cross stitch in, um, in their homes as and using the antique lettering to um, decorate a pillow or a bolster or a chair. So I follow somebody, and again, I'll put this in my notes below. I follow somebody on Facebook who has a blog, and her name is Miss Mustard Seed. And it's primarily decorating, it's not primarily cross stitch, but she has wonderful ideas. She often talks about reupholstering chairs, which I have not tried, but, um, she just had, I love um, some of the things that she posts. So um, she's very much into blue and white. And of course, that's what I have in um, my downstairs. So I'm going to show you a couple of pieces that she's done uh, using cross stitch because I just think they're so inspirational. So let's see, I cut out four different things here. So one of the things that she's done, and again, this is what can you do with antique samplers um, and do something different with the borders, with the lettering. So I don't know if you can see here, but this pillow right here, and in a lot of these cases, I'd probably choose a very coarse linen um, to stitch this on, but she's just stitched a border across there. Just a simple border, that's all it is. And the, but she's made it into a pillow and doesn't that look just charming in the chair? So I thought that was a lovely idea. She also has done, um, just chosen a favorite alphabet. And again, just stitched it on. Now this is probably a piece of antique linen, but if, as I say, if you got a piece of linen that looks coarse to you so that the uh, lettering um, stood out and was large enough, I'm gonna show you some sources today also from some of my books of very large letters that can be used for some of these um, ideas. So I love that idea is the pillow. She also did this, isn't this charming? She did a bolster for a bed and used just a single letter on either side. You wouldn't have to buy antique linens. You could actually stitch a few stripes on there so that it looked like an antique. And then the last one that she did, this is a funny picture because in the picture, she has kind of a pile. I think it's of cording or something. But what I loved is, look at how she did lettering for the back of a chair. So if you study my room here, you'll see that right there, 
I actually bought a piece of antique linen um, years ago. I found it online, and, and you can find linen that is um, monogrammed, but you can stitch your own, you know, it's, it's not hard to do. But my chair with a JB on it is one of my favorites. I just love how that looks. So those are my ideas of how to use some of the letters from antique samplers in some of the projects that you might want to make for yourself or your family. So I'm going to show you two more books that I've done. And let's see, it's they're called French Alphabet 1 and 2. And the source for this, once again, was an alphabet that... Um, sampler that I bought. Again, it was it was um, just flat. It wasn't framed, but I loved the font of the alphabets in here. So I used one of the alphabets. Um, it's kind of a, I called it curly cues because it had a lot of little backstitch curly cues in it. I used that in this alphabet book. And then in this one, this is one of my favorite alphabets. You can see Oh, maybe you can't. Let's see if I can get it up close enough. That not only is the shape of the uh, the lettering so beautiful, but it has this beautiful leaf and um, flower stem that comes out of the center of the lettering. So you might find those uh, inspirational for yourself. So let me, I pulled out, as I mentioned, three books here that I wanted to show you. Um, I did not go online to look to see if they were still available. Um, they're all in French, but it doesn't matter. So this one, as you can see, I'll write them in my notes below. As you know, my pronunciation of French is quite scary. But I wanted to show you, I pulled, I found three different alphabets that I thought were just stunning. So look at the size of these letters. Aren't they just beautiful? And, you know, on a 14 count linen, that would probably be four or five inches high, which would be just lovely. Here's a second book that I wanted to show you. I'll hold that up for you. And I love these books. I often use them as sources for designing when I'm looking for lettering. I love this one because it has roses with each letter. And then the third book that I uh, pulled out of my library is, um, again, by the same author that I showed you with the first book. You can see what beautiful motif she has in here. And then this also, and there, there are more than, there are many, many alphabets in these booklets, incidentally. And this is another one that I thought was quite lovely that you could use. So, I, it's probably not everybody's cup of tea, but maybe I've inspired some of you to try um, something new with antique pieces. So, let's finish up today. I um, have a shop of the week, and as I mentioned before, it's the Stitch Niche, and it is 2425 West Arkansas Lane. Arlington, Texas. You can see her email there and her phone number. And the owner's name is Kim. I'd give her a call or write to her if you're looking for certain titles. And I'm sure she'd be happy to help you. And let's see, giveaways. I always go through my comments from the previous video and I use the random number generator to choose three names. And this week I have um, three names to list. And ladies, <clears throat> the best way to reach me is through my email, judy at jbwdesigns.com. And you can choose any of the booklets that I've uh, shown you today. So Susan B is the first winner. Patty, P-A-T-T-Y S is the second winner and Melissa D is the third winner. So just send me uh, an email and tell me what you what you like and I'd be happy to send out your prize. So I always like to include a quotation in my 
uh, floss tubes. And I, this one was perfect because it, it kind of went along with what I've been talking about today. No matter what type of needlework you love, let it fill you with joy. And that's so true. Our tastes are across the board. We know that from watching other floss tube videos. There's everything. And isn't it fun that there's such variety in what we all love to stitch? So my plans for the next few weeks. Um, my husband and daughter-in-law both have birthdays coming up. And so I'm going to have a dinner um, just a casual dinner with the whole family on Sunday to celebrate two birthdays. And my husband and I, as I mentioned, are going to be going on a trip. So it will probably be, probably be a couple of weeks until I'm able to film again. And I will miss you, but I promise I'll come back. So just subscribe and, and let me know um, if you have questions. And, things that you'd like to see me address. So I've told you my email. I have a website, jbwdesigns.com, and my Instagram is judy.whitman. So thank you so much, and I just appreciate you all. And we'll see you in a couple weeks. Take care. Have fun. Keep stitching.